beautiful i'm sunshine rains welcome to or welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be doing a book review the book we're going to be reviewing is the game of life and how to play it by florence scovel shin before we get into it let's just talk about a funny story about how i came about this book so i actually started listening to this book about a year ago on youtube and i was on my way home from Seneca or something i was scrolling one day i think it was two weeks ago now on tiktok and i saw a tiktok video about a girl who came across this book and how it helped her and it changed her life and so i was like okay bet i'm gonna read that book again i saved it the next day i was out and about running some errands i stopped by goodwill to see if i could find a coat so couldn't find any coat but I did find the book. I actually found the four in one book, four of her books in one single book and a couple of other books. So I grabbed a couple of books. It was probably like five or six books total. And I go to the register and the lady's like, oh, we're having a problem with our machine. We're only taking cash right now. So I'm like, dang, I only have my car. But the book is like a dollar or 50 cents. So I'm like, OK, cool. So I put it down. Well, I asked her because she hold it for me first. And she was like, no, I can't hold anything because if I hold something, then I'll, I got to hold something for everybody. You know, if they ask me to hold something. So I'm like, okay, that's understandable. So I go put the books back, except that one book, because I'm like, I'm going to get this book. And I go to the car because I know there's at least two quarters in there. And I something told me to grab a quarter off the couch that morning. So I know I have three quarters, right? I'm up three quarters. All I got to do is find one more quarter. So I'm searching, I'm searching, I'm searching. I look in the door. And there's one quarter. So I'm like, yeah, bet. I got my book. So I go back in. And the guy who was behind me, he had a, um, he was behind me in line. He's about to check out. He was standing by the book. And he was like, I already brought it for you. And I was just like, thank you so much. I was so appreciative because it was just like, you do not have to do that. You know, like you do not have to do that at all. And you did. And it was just. It was just amazing. It was a great way to start the day. Like, thank you so much. Like, thank you. I know this book was for me. I know this exact book was for me. And I need to learn it. And I learned so much from reading this book. So we're just about to talk about everything that I learned. And I just want to share with you so you can see and share with myself so I can reflect and I can listen back. Let's just jump into it. This book started off talking about how the game of life is all about giving and receiving. There has to be a balance between the two. She then talks about the three departments of the human being. The subconscious, the conscious, and the superconscious. Now the subconscious is always listening. The subconscious is the part that you're not even really aware of. The things that you learn that you're not even aware of. It doesn't take anything as a joke. So if you say, I'm um, B-R-O-K-E, it's going to take that in and spit it back out into your life. Okay? It's about the things that you feel, the things that that you hear and learn and the things that you visualize it takes all of those things in to create your reality that's ahead of you so it's kind of like taking everything in to create a script for your life to, for you to live out at a later date basically the conscious is about your it's about here and now everything that you think and see and feel right here right now the superconscious is the god mind the superconscious is where your higher self as i like to call it appears the superconscious is all the things that are perfect your perfect ideas your perfect life your perfect the way you show up perfectly in the world so the superconscious is where florence says your true destiny lies but a lot of people are ignorant of it a lot of people are unaware of their abilities their destiny their purpose while they were sent here and they tend to follow paths that weren't designed for them and it's that's when life starts showing up as troublesome or things start working out for you it's because you aren't going down the path that was designed for you a lot of us like i would i just did a review on um the mastery of love by don miguel ruiz and a lot of us start living life for other people a lot of us stop being our true selves and follow the paths of that other people designed for us, like doing things that other people want us to do, saying things or showing up as other people want us to show up. We're easily influenced, especially as kids. Like that's how we learn. We learn from other people. We learn from our parents and they learn their ways from their parents. And it's just like a, it's like they don't really, they don't, they're not really aware of what they're learning or what they're teaching. So they just pass it on. It's kind of like, that's, I would recommend you go watch that video on the Mastery of Love or go read the Mastery of Love by Don Miguel Ruiz and it's 
it really talks about how we're influenced as kids and how we're like infected with this disease of like jealousy and um what else was it jealousy hatred envy hypocrisy we're the if the disease just keeps getting passed along generation to generation she also wants to go say how manifesting specific people is a violation of spiritual law it's kind of like i saw this movie I forgot what the movie was called, but it was these these sisters and they were witches. I think it was two sisters and she was trying to manifest this boy, this man. She tried to make this man fall in love with her and stuff. And that's just not, that's not okay. Manifesting a specific person is taking away their, their free will. Like, it's going to backfire on you. We out of alignment, but not recognizing it. Facts! We're just completely out of alignment and it's becoming, it's becoming normal. It's becoming normalized. Like... In the mastery of love by don miguel he was saying um suffering has become normal but it's not normal to suffer at all it, it's just been normalized and it's like dang like we really weren't seeing her to suffer back to the manifesting specific people we're supposed to the law of substitution so instead of manifesting a specific person manifest the perfect person like when you don't ask for billy from up the street ask for your perfect person don't ask for a, per, a specific person's house ask for your perfect house ask for your perfect car ask for the perfect situations that are destined for you not specific things because there's so much that comes with manifesting a specific person or a specific whatever there's so many things and that's why for the mantra i love my life i realized that saying affirmations as i love my da 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 da, da. i love my da, 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 da. there's it's perfect for you if you love something it's perfect for you so you can't go wrong with manifesting something you love like you know how you can manifest ten thousand dollars you get to ten thousand dollars and then you're the ten thousand dollars came because you got a car accident now your leg broke your hip ain't right but you got your ten thousand dollars though like you have to be careful with your words so if you say i love the ten thousand dollars i'm i love making ten thousand dollars every month you can't really go wrong with loving it like you love everything about it you love what you did you love how you got it you love when it came you have to manifest with the law of substitution that's how you get the things that are meant for you you manifest with love she also said the only thing that stands between you and your desires is your own mind your own fear like things are you start you're stacking yourself out there's nobody in your way you don't have any enemies the only enemy you have is yourself the only blockage in your way is yourself, your mind, your own fears and limitations that you believe that you have. Nothing else can stand in your way of what's truly meant for you except your fear of going for it or your lack of believing in yourself. Getting into the law of prosperity. This was something that was kind of like, I remember having this conversation with a friend a while ago. Like when you prepare for something, if you're preparing for a flood, like there's no rain in sight right but you're preparing for a flood or you're preparing for you're preparing for whatever if you're preparing for something that means you are expecting it to happen even if you hope it doesn't happen or it's, it's just a what if or maybe i'm not saying like don't prepare for these things like natural disasters because they happen there's nothing that you can do to prevent it from happening but when it comes to pre asking for success in your life asking for you to get the things that you're going to obtain or the things that you want asking for something like that in your life and you ask for it but then you prepare to not to get it you you start thinking of ways backup plans you start thinking of like what if this doesn't happen you you're not going to get the success if you want success you have to prepare for success you know what i'm saying if you want to move and you only got four dollars in your bank account you need to start looking at houses you need to start looking at new comforters new beds furniture and stuff you need to don't prepare to not move if you really want to move once you start making those moves by spiritual law things are going to start opening up for you if you want a new job you need to prepare by looking for job applications like a job is not going to just pop up in, in your possession you know what i'm saying and another thing is right before breakthrough like if you're trying to manifest something or you know you're on your way to go get something or you're working towards something there's almost always going to be a breakdown there's going to be something that slows you down there's going to be something that makes it seem like it's impossible there's going to be something that happens that like shakes your faith but that's all it's doing it's testing your patience it's testing your faith it's testing you so just continue to push through 
continue to go about your life continue to strive and prepare for success very interesting she gave us some very good examples of this following statement you have to be willing to do the things you are afraid to do when you face these things they will disappear the things you you are afraid of are only there because you are afraid of them. When you face your fears, they're no longer fears anymore. And often they will disappear. Like situations will magically disappear. Things, you won't have to do anything. You won't have to do it anymore. Like things will start working out because you decide that you're not scared of it anymore. Mm. Another thing, which is why I stopped saying what I'm saying, is the power of your words, which I think is the next book in this series. So I'll be doing a review on that as well. But your words should only be used for three things to heal to prosper and to bless don't be cursing people don't be cursing people child i'm telling you i had a situation like was it earlier this week it was like last weekend and i could have cursed <laughs> i gotta curse this this person out like i could have i could have matched their energy but you know what i blessed them i told them i loved them and i i ended the situation i even prayed for them like i'm not your words are powerful and the words that you spew out will always come back to you and i think we're going to get into that a little bit too like the things you say about people to people the things you wish upon people will often come back to you because that goes back to your subconscious mind your subconscious doesn't register you saying these things to other people your subconscious register you saying these words to yourself and that's when these words come back to you through sickness and dis-ease because your words are so powerful, like the power of the tongue. The tongue is the st strongest muscle of the body. And I used to think, I think I was, I said that in a previous video, I believe. I used to think when people said that they meant like your, your tongue was like physically strong. But no, your tongue, your words, the things that you say. So that's how you create your life. So that, therefore, it makes it the strongest muscle of your body. She says all sickness comes from the violation of love. So if you're constantly talking bad about people, if you're constantly talking bad about situations and reminding yourself and reminding your subconscious of all the bad things that happen all the things that you don't like in life if you constantly criticize and all those things it's going to come right back into you it comes back as sickness they cause unnatural deposits into the blood so like you start getting sick your joints get bad and all those things so you just have to radiate love to live a loveful life to have a loving body to be healed stop cursing people stop talking bad about people stop judging people stop stop i know it's i know it's natural kind of it's not natural i know it's what's the word i want to say i know it's common i know it's been passed along i know it seems normal but it is not normal for you to think negatively about people and talk so bad about people and wish bad upon people it's not good it's not normal it's not okay it's unhealthy for you and next chapter was the law of non-resistance and she was saying how evil is made up like there is nothing but good in the world until you start thinking about evil until you start thinking about negativity and i was talking to i was talking to someone yesterday about like how there's so many different scenarios and things like on on all these murder shows and crime shows and stuff and there's so many things that i would never even think about until i saw it until somebody created it and presented it to me like you know how kids be like i don't like vegetables how kids all over the world don't like vegetables i don't think i don't think they didn't like that until they started putting those in movies and tv shows like there's a monster under my bed no kid kids when i had my daughter she did not fear nothing she wasn't afraid of the dark she didn't know nothing about no monsters or no boogeymans until she probably she saw something or read a book or like saw a movie that had it in there she didn't we don't know about these things until somebody deposits and plants these seeds into our mind and that goes to our next point if you don't run your subconscious somebody else will if you are not aware of the things that you're putting into your mind into your brain if you're not in control if you're not like stopping things stopping certain thoughts and things from getting through then it's out of your hands and it's up to you to grasp that and put it put it into your own hands you know what i'm saying start taking control of your life and your thoughts and that goes into i remember i met this man it was like i was about to go on my birthday trip and it ended up i had to go to this vegan restaurant that i didn't want to go to because the other two vegan restaurants in some reason in my city after six o'clock most of the vegan spots are closed like vegans we or like plant-based people we're not hungry after six o'clock you know what i'm saying so 
most of them are closed. So two of them were just randomly closed. They wouldn't door dash, so I had to end up going in there and I met this guy and he was just talking to me about like life and he was just like reading me and just giving me all this advice and stuff and that's when that's the first time i heard like if you don't have control over your mind somebody else does and he even said to me like a lot of the stuff i'm saying you won't remember right now but when the time comes you're going to remember and i'm telling you it was just like he yeah he's like it's like somebody got control of your mind right now <clears throat> and then i started learning about like how social media is like modern programming and and just like, yeah, somebody had complete control of my mind. Because they did. It was programmed for them to do that. Like, especially going up on the internet. Well, not all the way on the internet, but like in my teenage years, growing up on the internet. And it was just like, wow, like all these ideas and all these thoughts and all these things put out into their, put out onto social media and put out into these movies and these TV shows and these music videos of how we should think and how we should act and you know who i should be yeah definitely i had to get in control of my mind because like no this is my most powerful asset like i have to have control of me she also said that we should baptize events baptize failures with success so just like you get baptized in the church you baptize your life baptize your um your studies <clears throat> baptize the food you want to do um what's this in this book no. What's this in this book? What book there was? I was reading the book and they were saying basically everything that you do with intention is a spell. So if you're cooking and you your intention is to is to make a delicious tasting nutritional meal, baby, you're casting a spell because out there it's going to be good. Just do everything with intention. I'm pretty sure that was this book. She also says you must feel opulence before the success comes. You must prepare for success to get success expect success and prepare success you must be excited for all the things that's coming to you in order for you to really get it you must match that vibration of the things that you want in order to get it even though you don't have it physically you have to get excited and, and imagine yourself having it feel what it feels like to have it so you can you can like attract it to you kind of another thing she said which was it made a lot of sense to me is you often see your faults in others so often there are people in your life that do things that you like oh you just irritated with them about doing it you hate that they do it you don't like them because they do it but you have to really look at them you say how is it showing up in myself because everybody is a mirror of you especially the people that are on your direct life path they show you things within yourself you're only going to really connect with people who mirror you in some kind of way so i had to realize like for example i would this somebody i was that was in my life would always over talk me like cut me off and stuff or change the subject that was that was a whole nother situation but they would change the subject when like, we was talking and i had to realize like i do that unintentionally but i do it so i can't even get mad and you can't really get mad at people for being who they are showing up who they are you can't try to change them or their bad habits you really just work on yourself and you'll start to see once you start working on yourself that was another lesson in the master you love by don miguel ruiz all you can do is work on yourself and do your half of each relationship that you're in and you will see how everything starts to change and heal she also said how the robbers of time were the past and the future thinking about the past living in the past dwelling on the past loving on the past reminiscing on the past thinking about the future imagining the future instead of being here in the present in the now <sighs> oh i think scissor said it in the um song she's like oh what what's that what that song was looking for the fountain of youth when it's really here in the present like this is the time that's all you have right now the time is now not saying don't think about the past don't look in the past don't go back to the past to reflect or don't get excited for your future like yes do those things but also be in the now always be in the now so she was saying she said how before a manifestation come through there are often signs of landing like she gave the example of someone that was in a boat and they were they didn't see any signs of land, but they saw something like a can or something floating in the water or something that signified that signal that there was land up ahead. So often when your manifestations are coming through, you might not see it, 
but there is there may be signs of it like what's a good example like say okay for me personally manifesting a car like a jeep my dream my dream car i got to drive a jeep for like a week <laughs> and it wasn't my exact car it wasn't my car but that was my sign like yeah your jeep is coming baby just hold on be patient and just take those as your confirmation signs and there's like synchronicities and things of that sort and you have to redirect fear into faith because fear it's nothing but inverted faith. It's faith in evil. It's faith in bad. It's faith in whatever not happening. It's it's still faith. It's just faith in the things that you don't want. So you have to transform all your fear into faith. And a good way that I've been doing that is with mantras. There are a lot of mantras on my YouTube page, on my SoundCloud. Um, I even have two mantras on all my streaming platforms that you can listen to, that you can listen to while you're sleeping, that you can just sing, and it's just a mantra over and over and over to rewire your subconscious, to rewire that, um, all the things that you learn, all the fear that you've learned and taken in, it's, it's really been changing my life, like, seriously changing my life. So, yes, repeat mantras to yourself, repeat affirmations to yourself, go check out my mantras on here, I'll link some down below, um, yes and just see how it changes your life the next chapter was called love and one of the first things she said was no man is your friend no man is your enemy but each man is your teacher everybody comes into your life like we were talking about earlier how everybody is a reflection of you everyone comes to teach you a lesson everyone comes to show you something either about yourself or something that you need to learn or teach you a little gym or something like everybody is just a teacher and you have to look at it I like that you know how they say money is the root of all evil that is false it's the love of money that is the root of all evil it's the love of the overconsumption or the what can i say it's the the obsession with money and just letting get out of control that is the root of all evil you can love what money does for you you can love the freedom that comes with money but loving money itself the greed that comes with it that's the root of all evil the next thing that she said was speaking of how something bad always happens well it's reassure that it keeps happening so if you keep talking about how this happens how i always da 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 da, da somebody always getting on my nerves something like that okay that's your subconscious once again taking that in and making sure that it's going to continue to happen it's going to continue to track those situations where people get on your nerves it's going to continue to track situations where you always get stopped by red light it's going to continue to attract situations where you always get cheated on where you always find the right wrong dude where you never make good friends if you keep on repeating these things and claiming these things to be yours claiming these things to be true to your life they're going to continue to happen she was just basically saying how intuition doesn't really it's not really it's not anything to be explained. Intuition may not make sense when it comes to you. You just have to trust it and follow the way. She was basically saying everyone is perfect for who they are. Everyone is a perfect puzzle piece of this game of life. Everyone has their own design and their own destiny that they're meant to live out. But sometimes, you know, you, you lose that along the way. Sometimes you don't know what that is. Once you do find out what it is, doing it will feel like love to you doing it it will not feel like labor it will not feel like work it will feel like love pure love and sometimes fear often stands in the way of you and that divine expression like stage fright like with me i had to overcome my stage fright to be able to talk like this to be able to get on camera to be able to sing to be able to claim my voice like the experience that i had as a child with my voice and why i stopped believing that i could sing when really singing and making music is my divine gift like so i had to overcome that and oftentimes, objects are put in your way and roadblocks are put in your way like that to stop you and to see if you're going to stop and not make it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's really a test. At the beginning, we talked about how the objectives of the game of life was to give and receive. And sometimes you can get into a giving mode and you can be hesitant to receive, but that is not good because that... It's imbalance. If you just give, give, give and never receive, like you have to allow people to do things for you. You have to. That's the the masculine and the feminine. And 
I can make a whole video about that, but you have to be balanced to get masculine and your feminine. So receive when people offer you things, when people offer you help, when people offer to pay for things, when people offer you whatever. Receive it. Be open to receive it. Be glad to receive it. Don't hesitate to receive stuff from people. You can't do everything by yourself. You're not meant to. And then she gave a list of um, affirmations and things at the end of the book. But I would highly recommend you read this book. It was a very great book. Very, very great. Um, I learned a lot. And I'm excited to see what her other three books are going to teach me. And of course, I will share them with you. So stay tuned for that. Um, once again, if you want to listen to any of my mantras, just check out my YouTube channel. They're on here. They're also on... There are a bunch of TikTok on TikTok. I have a channel playlist on TikTok. Um, I have them on SoundCloud, on the podcast. And yeah, I love you so much. I'll call you back.